Hello and welcome. This is the first lecture of Intermediate Macroeconomics. Um, we'll be covering Chapter 1 in this lecture. Now, as you can imagine, this is going to be a fairly short lecture to cover an entire chapter. So I'm going to expect you to read most of Chapter 1 on your own. Um, but a few things I do want to talk about within this lecture is, well, what is macroeconomics? And well, for me, macroeconomics is this, we, we talk about this being the study of economics as a whole. Um, and really what it is, is we want to see how different types of economic agents interact with one another. Um, but we want to see this from a bird's eye view. So in microeconomics, we'd study the individual behaviors of each player within the economy. So we'd look at a single firm, a single individual. Here we want to look at, well, all firms, so private industry, all individuals, consumers, the government, um, and other major sectors of the economy. And we want to see how those sectors interact with one another, and we want to see how different economic stimuli can affect the um, overall workings of the macroeconomy. So some of the questions the macroeconomist might be interested in are, well, number one, you know, what causes a recession? You know, why do we have to have recessions? Why can't we just have steady, constant growth? Um, and then if we could figure out how to eliminate recessions, would we want to? Is there something good that happens during a recession? Well, there might be, and we'll talk about that a little later when we talk about business cycle fluctuations. All right, what about expansions? How do we maximize the amount of time we spend with the economy growing? All right, how do we minimize unemployment? Is, are there problems with um, being in an expansionary period all the time? Is there a good side? Is there a bad side? And we'll find out, well, maybe yes, maybe no. And well, just because we could eliminate the business cycle, maybe we wouldn't want to. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit more when we get into the business cycle fluctuations. But we're also going to talk about, well, what kinds of policies can help mitigate the business cycle? Um, these are a big topic for us in macroeconomics. You know, we have other individual type questions of particular um, large markets, like, for example, the housing market. We might also think about things like the financial sector. Uh, we might think about things like the commodity sector. Right? These are all different individual parts to the economy that a macroeconomist might be interested in. And finally, when it comes to policy, we probably are quite interested in fiscal policy. How does the government operate? What about its budget deficit? Can it run a budget deficit? How much should government debt be? How much is too much? Um, is there too little government debt? Um, what about spending? Um, is it more? Um, is it a bigger problem to have a high debt, or very very low government spending? All right. Which is more stimulative to the economy in time of recession? Tax cuts or um, increased spending? These are all questions that we can answer and we'll answer in different parts of the textbook, um, and and are quite interesting to the macroeconomist. So that's a little bit about what macro is and a little bit about what interests a macroeconomist. Now I want to spend just a little bit of time talking about the overall structure of this course. Um, and so this is an outline of your textbook. And in the first two chapters, chapter one and two, we have mostly introductory material. And in chapter two, I'm going to add a little bit of extra material because we'll talk a little bit about measuring the uh, macroeconomy, so measuring the data that we use to try to do studies and, and learn about the macroeconomy. We have to measure that stuff, just like any other science. And we'll, I'll talk a little bit more in depth about consumption and a little more in depth about um, investment, as well as some of the index numbers that we use than what your textbook does. Then in chapters three through six, we really look at classical theory. So you can think about this as how the economy really works in the long run. Right? When everything has a chance to adjust and we're in equilibrium, prices are flexible, and I'm throwing out all kinds of words you probably don't know what mean, but don't worry. By the time we get through chapters three and six, you will. Um, then we move on to growth theory. Now, growth theory, I think, is probably, in chapter seven and eight, this is probably the most challenging part of this whole class. Uh, mostly because this is the most modern macroeconomic model we're going to use. It's the most complicated macroeconomic model we're going to use. And the math gets a little bit hairy, but stick with it and you'll be you'll be just fine. Um, but make sure you make sure you really pay close attention to seven and eight because they are a little bit more challenging, I admit. Um, but they're also one of the most rewarding to study because really, if we think about it, 
What is it that we want to see? How do we make the world better? Well, we figure out policies that help the world grow. Um, if we, and we'll talk about this more when we get to chapter seven and eight, but if we can increase the growth rate by a half a percent, that means over the course of a hundred years, a hundred percent increase in, actually I take that back, 400 percent more growth than what we would see uh, with just a half a percentage point less. So little tiny differences that we can make in growth rates are make really, really big differences over the long run. Um, so this is a really important set of chapters for us to look at. Then we're going to get into something's a little closer to my field of research because I, I'm more of a business cycle theory and, and short-run fluctuations. I, I study monetary policy and how monetary policy interacts with the macroeconomy. And these, these business cycle fluctuations are more close to what I think about um, all, every day with my research. And so we're going to spend some time talking about, well, why do we have recessions? How can we model the business cycle? Why do we have expansions? Um, do we have to worry about inflation? Do we have to worry about unemployment? What should we worry about? Um, and then we'll look at some of the policy implications of our models of the business cycle. And then finally, we'll finish up the course with a discussion of the great policy debates. So really, there have been uh, a, a few just major debates that have divided macroeconomists really for the last 100, 150 years. And what we're going to try to do is sort through those. Um, and try to put them into context of some of the political decisions and policy decisions that are being made today. All right, well, good luck with the course, and I am looking forward to, well, really being your tour guide through a, a subject which has been quite close to me for, a, for many years. Um, we will see you next time with the beginning of Chapter 2.